Hello and welcome back to Jarvis Johnson Gold, the premium channel that is free. Um, that is free. If you're watching this, you're premium. And I, I need help. I need help, my premium viewers. We've talked a lot about toxic masculinity, about alpha male podcasts, etc. And I want to be that way. I want to learn. I want to learn how to be a toxic boy. But my problem is that I don't want to watch videos and learn from. I just prefer to read. I just prefer to read is is the like my preference. Um, I'm I'm a bit of a reader. I'm a bit of a a bit of a bookworm, you know. So I wanted to find some literature, some literature where I could learn, you know, how to take charge, how to take control of my dating life, um, and maybe even control of my partner. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Become a controlling guy. <laughs> you know, this is this is like where we flash, like, do not attempt. <laughs> this is all a bit. <laughs> Please, I'm sorry, everyone. Today we're talking about WikiHow, and that is how I would like to learn things. Jordan pointed out to me, friend of the show, premium friend, Jordan Adika was talking to me and showing me some WikiHow articles. And I was like, wow, WikiWow. <laughs> that is quite the selection of garbage. <laughs> and I just want to show you some of that selection today. But first it's ad time. Are you always searching WikiHow for ways to make sustainable life changes and reduce harm to the environment? Well, stop that and start heading over to today's sponsor, Blueland.com. Blueland is your one-stop shop for cleaning products that are not just convenient, effective, and affordable, but also sourced from clean ingredients. Blueland uses no single-use plastics in any component of their product from their spray bottles to their packing materials. <laughs> Unlike your traditional liquid cleaners that are sold in single-use plastics, with Blueland, all you need is this little tablet. Here's how it works. You've got this cool reusable bottle. Go ahead and fill it with warmer hot water. Now drop one of the tablets into the water, then it dissolves. Oh, boom, now we wait. And you can use it in minutes. No shaking or stirring required. Their products are vegan and cruelty free, but they're also free of bleach, chlorine, ammonia, and parabens, cause who needs them? Blue Land is EPA certified, which means that EPA scientists have examined every ingredient in the product to make sure that it meets Safer Choices stringent criteria. I also got their bathroom cleaner, and now I can't wait to clean my bathroom, which is something I never say. Use my link in the description to get 20% off your first kit, and you'll be glad you did. Thanks again to Blue Land for sponsoring this video. Now back to the wiki. I think where I would like to start is something that I have always wanted to know how to do, how to get people to dream about you. I figure if I can get people to dream about me, then they will like me more because they'll be thinking about me all the time. You know, I've always wanted to be the man of someone's dreams. And now I can learn wiki how to do that. This article has been viewed 371,000 times. That's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's really gonna work. It does have two and a half stars, but we'll see what we can do about that. My influence. It's also got 17 co-authors, so it's been peer reviewed. There's a team, a crack team of dream specialists who have been perfecting this article. You remember Inception? They wrote this. <laughs> they. This is how you get, get yourself into someone's dreams. Getting someone to dream about you can be difficult. You can try to influence other people's dreams, but it may not work. It's a good thing to know that it, it might fail. As the subconscious creates dreams to deal with the problems you're facing. I like that they sourced that because I feel like there isn't a lot of conclusive evidence about, you know, like the role that dreams play in our brains, but alas. Oh, it's a Huffington Post article that they reference. <laughs> That is a scientific journal. Nonetheless, you can try the tricks in this article to influence someone you know. First, by getting into the person's mind before he or she goes to sleep, and second, by being memorable in general. Is one of the tricks getting into someone's mind? Because that seems like what we want to do. Oh, okay, this is method number one, getting into the person's mind. Okay, try giving them a picture of yourself. That's pretty normal. Hey. It's me, <laughs> please enjoy. This trick will work better if he or she places you on his or her nightstand. So you're just supposed to tell someone, hey, here's a photo of me. Perhaps you could put this on your nightstand and sleep next to this photo of me so that you dream about me. That's all, have a good day. If you are the last image a person sees before she sleeps, she'll be more likely to dream about you. 
Okay. The person who wrote this is like, if you are the last image Sandra sees before she sleeps, she's more likely to dream about me. I mean, you. I mean, maybe Sandra will love me. I mean, perhaps this generic person will dream about you, I think. Anyway, Sandra, please. <laughs> I'm asking, I'm begging, put me on your nightstand. Call or text the person near bedtime. I love this man's big head and his tiny little phone. <laughs> Hello? Jessica, no reason. I just wanted to make sure you heard my voice before you went to bed. I'm scaring you? <laughs> uh, well, sweet dreams <laughs> um, or nightmares. Number three, talk to the person. So far, all of the methods of getting someone to dream about you are getting uncomfortably close to a person. Either you're like giving them a photo of you to be next to them while they sleep, which no one's going to agree to, or you're calling them right before bed, which is again, like, why is this person, if someone were calling me every night before bed, I would be like, are you trying to put some sort of love spell on me? What is going on? Number three, talk to the person, AKA whisper softly into their ear. Wait until the person is in deep sleep. While the person is dreaming, try saying something to them quietly, such as dream of Nikki. Ugh. How did you get next to them while they're asleep? I feel like I feel like your problem may have already been solved if you're next to them while they're sleeping. Or is this a horrifying situation and you were not supposed to be there whispering into their ear? You know, some people watch these videos, I'm sure, while they're falling asleep. So let me just do a little sleep ASMR. <clears throat> Dream of Jarvis. Didn't Jarvis look pretty tonight? Sleep tight, but also think of me. <laughs> Use a characteristic smell. Whether you have a signature perfume or you prefer a particular soap, introduce the scent to the sleeping person. It really does feel like you're dealing with sleeping beauty here. There's just like this inert sleeping person that you have <laughs> unlimited access to that you can just try shit on. While they're in their endless slumber, go ahead and uh, try lavender soap. Every time they smell lavender, maybe they'll think of you. Or while they're asleep and unconscious, you just whisper into their ear because they have no say in any of this. Like sound, smells can be incorporated into dreams. And if it reminds the person of you, you may show up in his... Ew. Record a video of yourself. Aha! One step ahead of you, actually. If you can get the person to play it before bed, you may be able to encourage the person to dream about you. I'm doing that to all of you right now. Sweet dreams of me. <laughs> um, leave a memento that reminds the person of you. Try leaving it on his nightstand to remind. So are you like you're already hooking up you're already sharing a bed sometimes so it's like after you bone go ahead and leave a trail of clues <laughs> like leave a series of mementos and puzzles to remind your lover oh that's okay so that was all method one um so i think i believe we've turned into a cat uh <laughs> in, in method two and that is one way to be memorable if you're like an anamorph <laughs> or something we were just hanging out and then he like turned into a cat and i'm never gonna forget that actually i think i was scarred <laughs> i think think that's that's gonna live rent free in my head and maybe in my dreams and it's like boom got him you're gonna dream about me <laughs> all right it was all worth it whether you like bold glasses or own 20 cat hold on these are maybe the two most different things whether you like bold glasses you know like you're making a fashion statement with your eyewear or you own 20 cats that is an animal shelter <laughs> that is the 20 cats it's the things that make you unique that make you memorable i think maybe i think that we're all unique out of the box we're all our own unique person and simply by being ourselves we will be memorable to those that matter to us i hope I hope I don't have to get cat. <laughs> the guy. I hope I don't have to get twenty cats. That seems like kind of a lot. Oh, maybe I'm the guy who like wears two pairs of glasses. You know? Am I in your dreams yet? Am I? Do you remember me? Oh, this is very disorienting. Uh, but anyway, it'll be all, it'll all be worth it when you dream about me. Okay. No more dreams. I can't do this anymore. Give the person a compliment. This guy does not look like he's giving. It looks like he's. I don't know what it looks like. It looks like he's confessing his love. Don't you understand? I like your shirt. It's a good shirt. We're both wearing white. And that's why I, I love you. Please dream about me. Try a hook. <laughs> it's like you're, it's like a fish. If you're just meeting a person, give them a memorable piece of information about yourself. The best kind of hooks are funny. For instance, say you're meeting a friend of your sister at a gathering in Arizona. Wow, this is a specific. 
and Sandra's there. And you're like, you again, Sandra. <laughs> Maybe now's my chance to finally plant myself inside of your dreams. You could say, hi, I'm Carrie's sister from Oklahoma. I tried to leave the tornadoes behind the wait. Oh, that's funny. And yeah, and then they're like, oh yeah, I think Carrie's, Carrie's sister is uh, like Poseidon or something. <laughs> like I don't, she seems to have control over the wind and water. Um, I know that, you know, tornadoes are not the water stuff, but I couldn't think of like, well, I don't know a god of wind. Alakir, the wind lord from Hearthstone. Is it? Is he the wind lord? Damn. Damn, I'm good. Check that shit out. <laughs> a memorable piece of information about yourself. Hi, I'm Joe's brother from Florida. And who knows where the bodies are buried? <laughs> okay, so maybe getting into somebody's dreams is a little too indirect of a solution on my quest to become a toxic boyfriend, womanizer, alpha male, you know, like all of the above, master manipulator, girl boss. So how about the question on all of our minds, how to pull a one night stand with women? <laughs> That's, oh, it's, it's, it's written by an expert. And I don't want to say his name, so I'm going to censor it, I think, I hope. But then it's also got 29 co-authors. This is serious stuff. This is, uh, this is exactly what I need to know. The rules of society are changing, and more and more people today have sex lives outside of the confines of relationship. <gasps> the most casual of sexual encounters, the one night stand. The most casual? I feel like you could probably have like a even more casual thing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe the one day stand. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe it's not even night out. You know, maybe you're not even sleeping over. You just like knock it out and get, get going. The most casual of sexual encounters, the one night stand involves a thrilling, spontaneous meeting between two consensual partners who were emboldened by the fact that they may never see each other again. That's true of any anyone in in life first step go looking at a bar or nightclub one timeless strategy for finding a partner for a one night fling is to search for nightlife visit your favorite bar nightclub or lounge post up for a while take note of the women around you you're like ah oh, yes <laughs> hmm. a potential one night stander <laughs> no they, that's they don't mean that take note of the women around you and see who is alone Okay. When you find a girl you're attracted to, strike up a conversation and offer to buy her a drink. Don't harass a woman if she doesn't want to be bothered or proposition her for, for sex right off the bat. Well, that's obvious. But yeah, don't harass women in general. Use a hookup app. Certain apps like Tinder and Down were designed purely to match up people. And that's sourced from an expert. <laughs> you needed an expert to be like, hey, Tinder was actually made as a hookup app. <laughs> Sealing the deal, you become me. Look your best. Try your best. Turn yourself into me. <laughs> that's that's what that's what this article is all about. Okay, so this article is pretty boring, but I love end on a high note. Thank you. Thanks for the sex. Thank you for allowing me to pull a one night stand with a woman. I'm going to report back to my my friends at WikiHow and let her know how it went. Reassure her that you'll be discreet about the details of your encounter. <laughs> no one will ever know about the sex we had. How do I pull a one night stand with women if I am shy? Your odds aren't good. <laughs> like, wow. Become not shy, actually, first, and then, and then you can figure it out. Because everyone knows if you're shy, you don't deserve love. How to ask a coworker for a one night stand? Knowing the risks beforehand. Familiarize yourself with your company's fraternization policies. Y'all know fraternization. Like you approach a girl at a club and you're like, hey, you down to fraternize? Make a point to familiarize yourself with the written policies on fraternization. They're they're always just posted on the wall. Uh, at every company, you just like go walk over to the fraternization policies. Much like if you, you know, need to find out where the bathroom is, you can be like, hey, could you point me in the direction of the fraternization policies here? Pros may include having a one night stand with a person you're familiar with because you work together, having at least one thing in common, work with the partner for the one night stand in the exciting forbidden nature of the affair. I've reviewed the fraternization policies and I do believe we would be in breach of those, but due to the forbidden nature of this affair, uh, it could be fun. And then of course, like all, of, like all of these articles, you've got to deal with the aftermath. Everyone knows after you have a one night stand with a coworker, you get a giant stack of papers that you've got to, that you've got to deal with. Um, most of those related to HR, 
violations. One of the biggest mistakes you can make here is posting about the affair on Facebook. <laughs> Remember, once something is on Facebook, it's hard to take it back. The universe revolving around Facebook here is hilarious to me. Also, how and why would you ever post about a one night stand on Facebook? Hey, me and Cindy from accounting, we fraternized. It's like a Facebook status. Jarvis is fraternizing with Elizabeth from HR. <laughs> oh, from HR, uh-oh. The policy violation is happening from inside the house. What do I do if she's already married? Her dad is the boss of the company. What is your life? Find someone else. What are you doing? Most people vote. <laughs> if she's married, then you should not pursue her. Majority not helpful. How to make a guy jealous. I'm gonna assume that this also applies you know, for the for the women that I'm trying to fraternize with. All is fair in love and war, they say. And in the battleground of love, there are a few weapons more powerful than jealousy. Oh God. And this is written by a relationship coach whose name I'm blurring out to not put them on blast. But it was also co-written by almost 200 people. If you wanna make a guy jealous, then this wiki how is for you. This could either help me with my, you know, pursuits or it can help me defend against the enemy you know, in the, in the battleground of love. Just in case I ever see any women trying to make me jealous, I'll know what strategies they're using. Okay, so first you gotta make sure he has feelings for you. Jealousy only works if a guy has feelings for you. True, you gotta look your best, cause guys hate it when you look your best. They get so jealous when you do that. Let him see you having a great time. The best thing you can do is have a fantastic time without the guy that you wanna make jealous. And that just feels like just you're just living your life and then you're just hoping the guy becomes jealous as a result of that. This can mean laughing with your girlfriends, dancing it up at a party, or just doing something that makes you feel happy and free. Why do you have to do do those things to make a man jealous. Just do those things to feel happy and free. Okay, so if I want to make a girl jealous, I need to live my best life and ignore her and flirt with other people. And then what do I get though? What do I get? Do, do at some point date other guys? <laughs> so just completely live a, like, I don't understand what, like, what do you gain from making this person jealous? Are you just playing the like extreme long game? Step one, flirt with other guys. Step two, date other guys. Step three, find another guy to marry. Step four, have kids with that other guy, uh, retire after a long loving marriage with that other guy and your family. And then homeboy's gonna be real jealous, let me tell you. He's gonna be chomping at the bit to date you. <laughs> He's gonna not be able to freaking hold it in, man. He's had <laughs> decades and decades of buildup and he's just been waiting there while you live your best life, taking no action of his own. Look at him, look at him w watching his life pass him by while he waits for you to stop having such a grand old time. I mean, this dude is kind of weird if he's just standing off in the distance every time you're having a good time. Like that would be, it's like, hey, is he still here? Like, why does that guy do that? It's like, I don't know, I think he's trying to like make me dream about him or something. I don't know, he smells like lavender. Constantly whispering in my ear. If you're always available for him, you'll lose some of your mystery and mystery can create jealousy. But if you're never available for him and if you never ever talk to him or look at him or <laughs> think about him or dream about him, then he's probably gonna be super into you. But you should never give in to that temptation. You've gotta marry someone else. <laughs> Make him jealous forever. Talk about other guys in front of him. Just ruin this man's self-esteem. <laughs> Make him seem like he is the least desirable man in the world. Talk about how Mark is so hot. Have you heard of the Arctic Monkeys? Mark burned me their newest CD and I just can't stop listening to it. I really wanna fuck Mark. I think I'm actually eloping with Mark. Hey, just an update, Mark and I are married and we're gonna have our first kid. Hey, I know it's been a while, but um, Mark and I, we're living our whole lives to make you jealous, but the Arctic Monkeys, now if you'll recall, Mark did burn me a CD of theirs that I couldn't stop listening to. They actually played at our wedding and now our kids are graduating from college. I love Mark, <laughs> what can I say? I hope you're doing great. I hope you're doing good though. I hope you're still jealous at me. So in short, completely crush a man, crush crush all of his dreams. And that's the end actually. <laughs> you never you never get with him. You never reveal that you've been trying to make him jealous this whole time. You just <laughs> destroy his life and his self-esteem. Oh, sorry, at the very end, don't try to make him jealous for too long if your goal is to date him. Well, 
sorry, I have already retired with my wife. <laughs> so how to fake drunk text your ex? This is unhinged. This was written by a, per a real person, a staff writer at WikiHow. Okay, so this author has written a lot of these. A ha seduce a Libra woman, know if a Le Leo woman likes you, text a Sagittarius man, how to caress. They've got a wide breadth of knowledge, it seems. Sometimes texting your ex without an excuse may feel too scary. Okay, red flag alert. But by pretending to be drunk, you can take tons of pressure off the situation. In any case, a fake drunk text can give you the comp. This is wild. Send a friendly, fun message to get the conversation going. Messages like, hey, I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah, like, text them a funny thought you just had about them. Okay, you know what I just thought about? If you moved to Montana, you would be Hannah from Montana. Whoa. <laughs> I think that's more of a high thought than like a drunk thought. Or go for the friendly over the top greeting, throw in a couple extra letters to give the impression that you've been drinking. Oh yeah, hey. Hint at the fact that you've been drinking. I think it is clear from this text already. You do not need to do any additional hinting. Oh my God, Deep D left her phone at the last bar. I'll text you in a sec, cowboy. What are these emojis? They just don't match the tone. I just got red wine on my new sneakers. I think it's pretty obvious at that point. You're laying it on a little thick. Send a blurry, silly photo. You're so drunk that the autofocus on your phone doesn't work. Send a silly selfie, a blurry photo of something, your ex. Your ex? Wait, why is this your, oh, it does say fake drunk text your ex. This whole time, I didn't realize we were trying to re-engage with an ex. This is wild. The best part about fake drunk texting is that you have to fake drunk apologize for texting the next day. Oh my God, yesterday, I regret that so much. That was wild. Whoops, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so embarrassed. And last but not least, we have to end this. Okay, but this is maximum toxicity. This is the maximum toxicity article. How to check your boyfriend's phone without him knowing. I think this is fucked up. This is bad behavior. We don't like to see this at all. Where is my boyfriend? Who is he texting? It's a terrible feeling when you start to doubt your partner's whereabouts and wonder if he's been less than faithful. Okay, but like maybe have a conversation before spying. <laughs> um, you have a few technical options at your disposal. Ugh. Tracking your boyfriend's phone with find my iPhone. Oh, that's so weird. Notify me when he goes to a new location. Oh, and then you could also use paid spying apps. So in case you want to spy on your boyfriend, please use any of the surveillance technology available. His old text messages and outgoing calls? Dude, this is this is wild. Why are we why did we why did we write a guide about this, huh? This person knows an awful lot about spying applications. I'm a little concerned. What else do they know stuff about? Ah, yes, air conditioners. <laughs> they, oh, how to extend my garage and how to reset a Frigidaire dishwasher. Replace grease in a grease gun. This person knows everything. They're like anything you need. Home renovations, spying on your boyfriend. I got it all, <laughs> uh, whatever you need. You want what, you want to get bad smells out of your microwave? No problem. Oh, you want to know wh who your boyfriend's been texting? I'll, I'll tell you that, but only after I tell you how to tell a Roomba to go home. <laughs> Make a worm farm. I have a question for you, my premium viewers. <sighs> Would you still subscribe to me if I was a worm? Be honest. O okay. I respect it. No further questions, but I hope we all learned something today and I hope we're all just a little bit more alarmed. Bye.